Hello and welcome to a new video about security, safety. Yeah. This time we're going to talk about security measures, how we can reduce a risk. The last few videos were about risk assessment, how we then identify risk and see if a risk is there, what dangers, what hazards are there in a potential danger area and so on. This time we're going to talk about how to reduce those dangers yeah? or how to get rid of them so that we can use simpler control systems. Yeah? Make our application, our machine as safe as possible. That's the goal. Yeah? So we're talking about protective devices. Yeah? One rather simple version of protective devices are so-called guards. Yeah? So what are guards? So we are talking about guards now. Guards protect the castle. <laughs> yeah, but somehow it is. A guard in this in this thing is some physical barrier yeah, between the the operator and the danger area. Yeah? So there is some physical barrier. Yeah? It might be a fence, it might be a cover, it might be something like this. Protecting the operator from reaching, from reaching the, the, the danger area. Yeah? So the danger, the danger zone and the operator are separated. And they are not only separated, they are separated physically. Okay? The danger zone cannot be reached. This is the sense of a guard. In German it's called trennende Schutzeinrichtung, separating, separating protective devices. Huh? That's guard in English. So, basically, there are two types of guards. Huh? One, which is, let's say, always protecting, is the non-movable or fixed guard. Okay? So, there are fixed guards. Those are mounted. Yeah? I can only get them loose with a tool. Yeah? So, these are... These are, for instance, fences, fences, covers, other physical barriers, yeah. something like this. Fixed guards yeah. cannot be removed. Cannot be moved, removed. without tool. Okay? That's a fixed guard. And then there are the, the, the movable guards. Because it's, I simply cannot just build this in a case. Yeah? What I, I usually have to go inside there. Uh, imagine a machinery. Yeah? I need to change the tool. Yeah? I need to put in or at least I put in some raw materials and I have to get out the product, right? Huh? So I have to go at some point in time, I have to go in there, huh? in the potential danger zone. Huh? Because if it's a drilling machine or something like this, I drill the product. Huh? There needs to be a hole inside and I need to get this product out and I need then to go into the danger zone, right? So we are, there are also movable guards. Yeah? Movable. Guards. This might be doors. Doors. Ooh, double O. <laughs> Flaps. Flaps. Something like this. Something which we can open or access then the danger zone. Yeah? If we have 
can be operated. However, if this is really should do a guarding, yeah, then it needs to be checked if it's closed or not. Yeah? So usually there are limit switches. Yeah? There are limit switches at the doors, at the flaps, at wherever I, I can open. There are, have to be some, some switches which indicate the door is locked or not locked. Okay? The door is closed or not closed. Yeah? That's, that's it. Yeah? These movable guards, they need limit switches to indicate open closed okay need to have limit switches now let's imagine let's imagine i have a machine this is working Ooh, something is going inside there is a door i open it the machine has to stop of course so this is these limit switches alone are not there. They also need safe safety control to check the limit switches. Okay? So we need the limit switches and we need a safety control which is able to check the limit switches and then shut down the machinery in case of danger okay these two things i have to do and how these are executed are then deriving for instance in the process level in the in the, in the performance level uh, which safety category i am yeah these fixed guards safety category high yeah movable guards depends on how we switch the limit switches and which type of control we are using. Then we are in different categories, for instance. Yeah? So, uh, this is not enough. <laughs> Still not enough, yeah? because if I open this, yeah, the machine needs some time to stop. Yeah? And usually, it's not... You, you, you know, you can move the barrier, the movable guard, you can move it far away so that you can not open and touch the machine. Yeah? You really have to open, go in, need some time itself and then reach the danger area, the danger zone and then the machine is stopped. Yeah? So there are standards about this, how fast is a person moving, how fast can it grab and so on, how far uh, can it grab, how thick is a finger that we can punch through uh, even a fixed guard and so on yeah so this is uh, this is covered by standards okay however we cannot just guard 10 meters away from a machine if this is a long stopping time or something like this yeah this is simply not possible then we sometimes need locking devices yeah which will lock the movable guard closed. Yeah? Sometimes locking devices are needed. Then the door is only released after the machine has reached a safe status. So I cannot just open, it's locked. It's locked yeah? because it's too dangerous. And those locking devices, they also have to, to be of a type that, you know, if there is a power failure or something like this, yeah, then the door is locked. Okay? The unlocking must be active. Yeah? So with active unlocking, so standard is locked. And only if there is power enough to unlock this, then it's unlocked. Yeah? Locking devices. Used, used if I cannot stop the machine fast enough. Yeah? Locking devices. So movable guards. I give you now one example about uh, how those might operate. Yeah? So I will do 
simply on the back. I will use, use a new, I will use a new sheet of paper for you. For you, there is nothing too expensive. <laughs> so let's say we have some doors. Yeah? Let's say we have some doors, safety doors. Yeah? Sliding doors, we can slide them open, slide them. Yeah. And then we have our protective switches. One is here, roller level switch. One is here, roller level switch. Yeah. Also here, the roller level switches, they are checking if the door is closed or open. Okay. And somewhere here is my protective, my protective control, safety control system, which might stop, which might stop the machine. So this is the safety control system. And usually they have some inputs and check if if the wires are okay or not. Yeah. And how is this wire now? Yeah. How or how might this wire? Yeah? Let's say the machine is only allowed if all doors are closed. Yeah? So I could come to the idea that here I move to this further, move to this, move further, move to this, and now I'm going back. One loop, okay? Now I do a second loop, but because that's the characteristic of a safety control system, that it's not only checking at one switch, yeah? because this might be broken, we're checking both switches. Now we make the sec second loop. The second loop goes to this, to this, to this, and back. Now I have two loops. Now I have two loops, and they are usually active high. So this means if here is a voltage and I can back, I get back a voltage, the doors are closed. If here's a voltage, I get back a voltage, then the left switches are indicating the doors are closed. And if all switches are indicating the doors are closed, I can, the safety control says, okay, if you want to start, you can start. Okay? Gives the permission to start the machinery. If then one of these open, the permission is cancelled. Okay? So this is how this is working. Why is active high? Because if somewhere a cable gets loose and it's falling out, yeah, then the permission is for sure not granted because then the safety control thinks a door is open, even if it's not. Yeah. This is simply because if I get a signal back, then it's closed. Yeah. Active high. Active high. Always in safety control it's active high. Simply to cover also the fact that maybe there's a wire break yeah, somewhere. Now, this is one topic. And now let's say these cables and so on, they are somewhere, yeah? and due to some whatever reason, yeah, there is suddenly a short circuit here. Those cables are pinched and tuck, they are touching each other. Here's a short circuit. What does it mean first? Huh? Nothing. It looks for the safety control system as all doors are closed. This is an undetected issue, an undetected error. Okay. This is a problem, for instance, in, in category four. In category four, such serious connection are not allowed. Category four of, 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 of performance level. Uh, this is simply not allowed. Yeah? Because of that reason, because there might be the chance of undetected error. B 
Because right now, eh, if I open this now, this door, eh, if I now open this door, then this, this would look like this. Eh? This has moved. Let's say these doors, they are still closed. Yeah? So here we have switched and here we have switched either. Yeah? Here we are, still, we are still there and here we are still there and here we are still there and here we are still there. Yeah? What does it mean for the signal? Yeah? If we have this, this short circuit here. Yeah? So here is high level signal coming going to here, further, going to here, further, going to here. This is now switched off and I only have low voltage here. So this is indicating now this door is open okay, to our safety control. On the other hand, I do have here And here is the short circuit now. Here we would have also switched off. Yeah? But since here we have the short, short circuit, yeah, I'm getting back information that the door is closed. Yeah? And this is also a typical thing of a safety control system. This safety control system now sees, aha! Ooh, there is an error. Here must be an error because one line is indicating the door is open, other line is indicating the door is closed. Cannot be, no start permission. Okay, check, working. Okay. Even if I close this door then and it looks okay, this is also not giving it free, yeah, because it needs then to reach the safe area, it needs the reset area. Yeah? And this reset area is both must indicate they are open, yeah? because that is where the error happened. Yeah? So, however, I can do it like this. I can open that door. Yeah? So if I open the door, then I will, it will look like, because all of those will switch off. I will also switch off the short circuit for the safety control system. It looks okay. Then I close this door, then I close this door. Still operatable. Still the error is still inside yeah? and the machine can operate. So this is an issue. This is an issue. This is why this is not suitable for category 4 uh, security levels. There are then special switches for category 4 which do have uh, its own checking if there and there is voltage. And the, because the, if this switch checks here is voltage, yeah, then this has to alarm also. Yeah? So there needs to be special wiring and so on. Yeah, so you see, for category 4 you need quite to do something inside. Such things, such linear things, in a lower category. It's permittable. Okay? So this is why the, the security architecture, the security categories, they do have influence on our safety integrity, integrity level and our performance level. That's it. That's guards. Yeah? Guards. Fixed guards, protecting always. Movable guards need to be special measures. Yeah? That they are that they are valid as guards, that they are valid to reduce our, our risk. Okay. Next time we are going to talk about other protective areas. Yeah? We are talking about not about guards, we are talking about uh, protective devices, which usually in combination with guards will somehow secure the danger zone. What these protective devices might be and how they are working will then be in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.